Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I'm gonna do something pretty different today. It's something I've talked about before. Uh, I don't know how this is gonna go. And by the way, I hope this start of your day is as good as it possibly can be, but you're gonna get a tour of BHB, the upstairs, uncut. No edits, no cuts, just me showing you guys around. I haven't thought of anything. I am just gonna start pulling out random animals and talking about those animals. And uh, you're gonna get to see, whoa, and here's the first one. This is actually an albino. Plains garter snake, or what they would call a radix garter snake. We work with a handful of garter snakes here, like uh, obviously the Plains. We also work with Mexican garter snakes, the Scots Eye. We also work with the Checkered. And uh, and I'm sure that as I'm going through this, I'm going to stumble on some words, and I'm going to, you know, not sure what I'm going to show you guys. But I just want to give you the whole idea of what we're doing here. This, of course, is just a hypo and an albino corn snake. So the hypo just kind of makes the albino a little bit brighter and a little bit more orange. And if you guys like this idea I'll go ahead and do one on the basement and I'll also do one on the reptarium that way you kind of see everything that's going on here and uh, you know again I have no idea how long this will take I'm just going to show you around the colubrid room uh, the gecko room and stuff like that this is actually a palmetto corn snake almost looks like a cow reticulated python just an absolutely gorgeous animal uh, this is a recessive mutation so unlike the cow that's an allelic it's uh, that's recessive and uh, just you know completely different uh, I'm going to show you this guy here oh this is so beautiful take a look at this it's actually a tangerine albino Honduran milk snake just a little one and all the ones I'm showing you right now are basically stuff that we're raising up for the future you know these are all just kind of future uh, breeders that eventually hopefully will get up to size and be able to uh, to be part of the BHB clan right this is actually our false water cobra just super cool ammo. This is the first false water cobra that I've ever worked with, and uh, it's, whoa, it's uh, truly an amazing snake. I mean, there's so much to show you guys. I could go on forever, because uh, I'm not gonna open up every single drawer, because this video would be uh, three hours long, but uh, but I do wanna give you the overview. Of course, I showed this not too long ago. This is an Alterna, which is a gray-banded king snake, and, uh, and, and again, we always go through and we kinda pick out a handful of animals that we just kinda think will be good down the road, right? Like, you know, what should we produce more of? New projects, you know, sometimes we're breeding this to that, so we keep all the babies to raise up. This is just a high white, black and white cow king. Would be, uh, you know, like a uh, what they would call in a barren high white cow king, something on that lines. Uh, and again, I have not pre-chose anything. I'm just literally looking through and uh, grabbing some animals, uh, you know, and just kind of showing you guys off. This is actually, we're raising up some new Kenyan Samboas because our group of Kenyan Samboas, quite frankly, is probably 20, to 25 years old so they're getting pretty old you know I mean they're typically a you know 20 to 25 year old animal I mean then then they they're, they've lived their lifespan so most of our adults are literally getting to where they're getting old and they aren't gonna breed very much longer so we're raising up some North Kenyan Samboas just because we love Kenyan Samboas and we think that they're absolutely amazing animals oh this snake here I remember this snake this is one of the most gorgeous snakes I've ever seen a pink coral corn snake this is a snow corn snake but just pink i mean when i started breeding reptiles the animals that are out there now i could have never imagined in a million years we would have seen you know i mean they're just so absolutely incredible and uh, and again this is raw and uncut guys so i'm going to probably struggle on some things here and there getting stuff back in and and so like that but again i just thought this would be a pretty interesting idea for you guys to just again see what it's like here this is an ultra mel scaleless corn snake whoo I tell you what, the ultra males are kind of, uh, they're allelic to albino, number one, and they're kind of hypo-ish. You know, so in the beginning, people thought that they were maybe T-positive albino corn snakes, and, and, and in theory, they kind of are because they're, they have uh, uh, you know, tyrosine, but they're lacking the black part of the melanin. This is an albino. Whoa, and it just bit me. Look at that. Little monkey, what are you doing? What are you doing, silly? You gotta let go, sweetie. I, oh, it's, I tell you what, for a little snake, it's got quite a bite. It's okay, bud. You can let go now. And uh, like I said, uncut and untethered here. I mean, it is what it is. We're gonna see if we can get this snake off me real quick. Put it back. You are a silly little monkey. And that, of course, is just a baby from this year that we're raising up. This is actually, uh, let me see if I can get, these are kind of squirrely, but they're really beautiful. This is a hypo Pueblin milk snake. 
So again, it's a Puebla milk snake, but all that kind of brownish purplish look is, uh, is again, that tyrosine, which is a, is a protein in melanin uh, that makes them really cool. This is an extreme reverse Okati corn snake. This thing is gonna be so dope when it gets bigger because all of that color is gonna turn white in here and it's just gonna be a really good one. So these are the extremes. So there's like reverse Okatees and then there's re extreme reverse Okatees. And again, all these racks are things that we're raising up for future breeders and stuff like that. Uh, just all kinds of different things. We've got, uh, you know, just scaleless, a little tiny scaleless corn snake here. This is a, a relatively young animal, but has a really interesting pattern to it. it has that kind of zipper zigzag down its back. It's really cool. And, and you know, I've told people this a ton of times that, you know, I started really as a colubrid guy and, and really have always loved colubrids and I've never stopped working with colubrids. So it was interesting. This is by the way, a hypo lavender corn snake. Again, a gorgeous snake. So it's interesting. A lot of times when people think like I'm a ball python guy, and don't get me wrong, I love ball pythons. But the truth is, is that I've been a colubrid guy forever. I've always produced more colubrids than I have ball pythons. This is an albino Arizona mountain king snake. And we had the, the first albino Arizona mountain king snakes we bought from a guy in Missouri many years ago. And what happened was he just had two unrelated normal Arizona mountain king snakes, bred them together and out popped albinos. And then we ended up buying them. And, and I tell you what, I tell you, you know, it's crazy how wild the industry was back then. But uh, we paid $50,000 for that project. That was like, I think there was like three albinos that he had hatched and then I bought the parents and everything else. And uh, it was a lot of money, but, uh, but it's been a fun project that had now for I don't know 15 20 years whatever it's been but uh, this is actually a snow Texas rat snake now the snow Texas rat snakes are interesting because they kind of popped up in our collection out of nowhere like we didn't try for like normally a snow would be an aneurysmic bred to an albino and then you get double heads and then you would breed those out and you get a, what they call a 9331 ratio so one out of 16 would be the double recessive interestingly enough we had an aneurysmic spontaneously see pop out in our collection uh, you know number of years ago and then when we bred the two aneurysmics together we didn't have albinos we had leucistics but we never had albinos and when we bred them together crazily enough out popped a snow so there was an albino gene so we popped the aneurysmic spontaneously and then ultimately popped an albino in the snow spontaneously this is just a little mexican black king snake everyone loves mexican black king snakes of course we have uh midnight next door and we have a ton of other stuff i mean they're really cool uh these are my little baby mangrove snakes let's see if you get the little one little here these guys are doing really well now you can see really getting some size to them, eating pinkies like crazy, frozen thawed. So really cool animals. And we have a pretty good group of mangrove snakes. I mean, we have some eggs now. We've got some females that are still gonna be laying pretty soon. And um, and again, you know, if you guys like this idea of walking around, showing you guys things, I'm happy to do this. Like I said, downstairs, we can do an uncut version. I don't know, people might like it, people might not like it. I figured it's been something I've been thinking about for a while. This is just a ghost corn snake, just a normal ghost corn snake, which is a, a hypo and an aneurysmic. So I thought to myself, let's just go ahead and do it. You know, right now, uh, it'll probably be a longer video than normal, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's uh, a way to distract you guys for a little bit of time. And you're getting kind of the real how things are here. Again, I'm not like looking for specific things. I'm just looking and pulling animals out and showing you guys again. This is another coral snow corn snake. So what happens with these, these are polygenic, which just means you breed the, the most pink to the most pink, right? And so over generations, when you're continuing to breed the most pink to the most pink you get more and more pink every generation same thing with the high white cow kings and some other polygenic traits typically leopard geckos have a lot of polygenic traits as well so um so that's, that's kind of how you do it but it does uh, increase as they get older right so in snow corns that that uh, ritophore that uh, that that uh, uh that red pigment actually increases as it gets older so the pink actually goes bigger and better this is actually a ghost scaleless corn snake. So again, a hypo, an aneurysmic, and a scaleless. So that's actually a triple recessive animal. So there's three recessive mutations. Of course, on this side, we have all of our adult corn snakes and king snakes and milk snakes, adult clubers. These guys are breeding now. This would just be a normal snow corn snake. And, and when we first started way back in the day in the 90s, you know, um, snow corns were like a big thing, you know? I mean, they had just been produced. That's an albino and it's an aneurysmic. And 
it was kind of a big deal to have them. You know, a lot of people like, oh my God, you've got snow corn snakes. So it's kind of cool how different things have gotten over the years. You know, now it's gotten so much more complicated. And some of these uh, females are already starting to kind of swell up with ovulations. This is actually a snow again, but then it's a sun kiss. Now the sun kiss is another recessive mutation that just kind of, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I think Bill and Kathy Love were the ones that named it because they said that the pattern on the head looked like it had been kissed by the sun, like a sun kiss. So that's why they call it a sun kiss corn snake. And uh, it's been around for a while now. Uh, this is a plasma corn snake. These guys are amazing. So this is a diffuse corn snake and it's a lavender corn snake. So a lavender diffuse corn snake, but they call them uh, plasmas and they're just really, really gorgeous animals. And, and again, like I said, you know, we're in the midst of breeding season here. And uh, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of breeders going on this year. Super excited to see just where that's gonna take us, right? This is an animal that we used to produce so many of these, and then the last couple years, we just started getting back into them after a few years of hardly ever seeing them. And this is actually a blizzard corn snake. And that is actually a uh, type two aneuthristic, which is actually lacking the red pigment, erinophore, but also lacking the yellow pigment, which is called xanthophore. And then of course, this is uh, an albino as well. So so it's uh, it's pretty cool that it's lacking pretty much all the pigmentation, it's lacking the, the yellow, the red, and of course the black. And uh, again, just kind of looking through some scale and stuff, obviously, you know, this is a big scale, it's corn snake female. She's a big girl too. She should, should have some good eggs this year. And you can see she'll have a little scalation back there and that's the thing that's interesting about scaleless corn snakes and scaleless rat snakes for that matter is that they are um, you know variable right you know I mean some will have more scales some will have no scales they always have ventral scales but this is actually a hypo motley scaleless corn snake and we do a lot with scaleless corn snakes and stuff like that we really love them I mean I think they're absolutely incredible animals and there's so much polymorphism with them and for whatever reason when you take that uh, you take that scalation away it changes the color and the pattern so much. This is a black corn snake here. So this is just one of the original type of snakes that, ooh, it's a little feisty too, uh, that you would find still, you know, found in the wild pretty regularly. And it's just an aneuthristic, which just means it's lacking the red pigment or that iridophore, right? So, so it's lacking that. Um, just going through and seeing, there's so much cool stuff. You know, this is actually a Tessera corn snake which is really cool. It's a pattern mutation. You can see the striping and the crazy kind of cool side patterns. And this one's actually had for scaleless. Last year we produced a couple scaleless Tesseras and they were dope. I mean, I was super excited about it. Uh, this is a little amber motley scaleless. Another, oh my gosh, the amber stuff is so pretty. Amber is actually hypo and caramel. When the caramel stuff is where the butter corns came from, the albino caramels are butters. And then this, of course, is hypo amber, and it's also motley and scaleless. So there's a lot of stuff going on. That's one, two, three, four recessive mutations all in one. That's 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 pretty dope. Of course, these are just Okatee corn snakes. Now the Okatee is a locality of corn snake that has those really thick black bands around the saddles and stuff like that. And uh, and we, we work with the Abbott's Okatees, which is a, a guy named Lee Abbott that actually produced them kind of, again, polymorphically bred them to become the most incredible animals. Here's a, a good example of an Abbott's Okatee right here. And um, he bred them over years just to produce, you know, that locality, but also a locality that was gonna be really, really beautiful, right? And then, of course, these are lavender snow cow kings. As babies, these are purple and absolutely stunning. You can see a little bit of pattern, and that's basically what that is, is a chocolate cow king that's bred to a lavender, which is kind of like a T-positive albino corn snake, or a king snake, I'm sorry, and then uh, breeding them back and stuff like that. These are the mosaic cow kings. Again, we are one of the, the people that had the first mosaic cow kings and it's just that kind of mosaic -y pattern on them and stuff like that and they're pretty pretty polymorphic you know you can get ones with huge black stripes you get some with kind of some broken up stripes and stuff like that uh, granite mex mex is another interesting animal. These are much like the gray banded king snakes. These are Mexicana, but these are San Luis Potosi, uh, or Mexicana Mexicana is basically what they say. And then the granite is ones that, instead of being more barred, is all graneted out like this. And uh, it does breed true. Uh, it's, it's probably like more like an incomplete dominant animal. You know, you've got your, your you know, Mex Max, and then that incomplete dominant seems to be the granite. And when you breed granite to granite, you do seem to get like a super Super granite, which is really, really crazy. Uh, Puebla milk snakes are always, you know, hugely popular. One of the cooler 
snakes when it comes to colubrids for sure. Uh, and this is actually a Halloween, which the Halloween just has more orange and more black in it and a little bit of a reduction of red. So it almost looks like a Halloween, you know what I mean? And then of course there's actually the Oreos, which are similar to Halloween's, just a uh, reduction of red, but instead of uh, orange making them Halloween, it's white, right? And then of course we have some of our garter snakes and stuff like that. I showed you the radix, but this is the, uh, the um, checkered garter snakes and we have the normal checkers we have albinos which are absolutely stunning you can see these guys right here i mean just look at just one of the prettier albino snakes and garter snakes are just to me are just some of the coolest animals i'm sure i feel that way because i've been working with them since i was a kid catching them out in the yard and stuff like that and then of course we've got a granite checkered garter snake too and that's a recessive mutation that just much like the uh mexican uh, uh max max that i was telling you about same type of thing right so of course we have our adult i showed you a little baby uh mexican black king this is one of the adults here you know this is just one of our, our breeders that is coming up and stuff like that and uh, again we should be getting eggs you know probably within about two 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 to three weeks we should have eggs whoa this one's a feisty little dude gotta be careful they're just this is a going or a blotch king sometimes called an apalachicola county king snake and they're just really cool, but they're very, very aggressive feeders. And like I had mentioned, we should be getting eggs, you know, pretty soon. Uh, here with, with ball pythons, we should be any time, to be honest with you. Just looking for a really beautiful Texas rat snake. This guy's a little feisty monkey here for sure, but what a beautiful steak. Look at the yellows and oranges in that thing. Whew. I tell you what, these guys are, go, whoop, there you go, buddy. You're all right, baby. You're okay. They're, they're super cool. And again, you guys know I've got Joker next door. I just, I don't know, there's something about scale of snakes that I've always loved. And uh, those guys are cool. Of course, this is a pink-eyed leucistic Texas rat snake. So most Texas rat snakes you see will have black eyes. This guy actually has pink eyes. So essentially this is an albino leucistic Texas rat snake. Now, interestingly enough, the pink-eyed leucistics popped up before the albinos, much like the snows I was telling you about earlier, that's kind of how it went, you know? Like, out of nowhere, you had no albinos, and also you had an albino leucistic instead of having albinos, and then to make leucistics. So, just an interesting kind of, you know, scenario there. Uh, we've got uh, some, some, some albino jelly, Brooks king snakes, and you'll see these little, little stripes on these, these silver stripes. That's actually a metallic marker uh, just to mark the male, so that way when Lori or whoever else is working with them can actually just kind of uh, run through really quick and, and, and find the animal, uh, you know, the male without having to sex it every single time. And it just, just makes, you know, makes for easy switching around and stuff like that. We have a little super conda here, if I can find it. Where are you at, buddy? I'm gonna put this down real quick and I'm gonna search for it. This is a, a Western hognose snake, and oh my gosh, it has literally disappeared on me here. These are cool. These are a, a, a incomplete dominant. This is the super version of it. And, and they called these elk, elk, anaconda hognose because they kind of, the, the anacondas, the, the, not the super, but the other ones, actually have uh, you know, almost like spots, almost like an anaconda. So they're pretty cool. Uh, again, more colubrids over here. We've got, um, you know, this is more stuff. So I showed you some stuff that were babies that were raising up. These are like the next year animals, right? So these are uh, a year old, essentially. Uh, this is a little topaz corn snake here. Really beautiful. I mean, that thing is gorgeous. And, you know, lots of corn snakes, lots of king snakes. I'll always be a colubrid guy for sure. So uh, so it's always fun to raise up new stuff and get new stuff into the colony. This is actually uh, what they would call a Terra Humera mountain king snake or a, uh, a, a no block eye oftentimes because the, uh, the the technical name is actually Pyro Milana no block eye. So it's easier to say no block eye than it is to say uh, Terra Humera mountain king snake <laughs> for sure. Uh, this is a licorice rat snake. It's been a while since we've had these. The first ones popped up in Maryland and uh, we bought ours at the Mid-Atlantic Show in, in Maryland years ago. And the Mid-Atlantic Show back in the day was actually the second largest show behind Daytona. So you had Daytona at that time, it was actually Orlando. And then ultimately uh, uh, the, the Mid-Atlantic Show. Now, of course, Daytona's still big, but it's not the biggest show. And Mid-Atlantic still happens, but it's a relatively local show. It's not a big national show. But back in the day, thousands of people would line up to get into the Mid-Atlantic. And that's where we got our first licorice rat snakes. This, of course, is uh, a Taiwan beauty snake. 
absolutely incredible. Beauty snakes are great because they're fast, they're big, they're, they're just an impressive snake for sure. These are the, uh, the black milk snakes. I've showed you guys in the past. This guy's almost all black now. This will turn as black as a Mexican black king snake. But this is what they call a gauge eye, and uh, just absolutely cool. I mean, I love the fact that they 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 look that way. Uh, got just some more stuff over here, some more scaleless corn snakes. We do have a few geckos over here. I'll show you really quick. These are just some of our uh, these are some of our babies that we hatched. I'm gonna get this out real quick for you. So this is actually just whoa. Oh, I did it. I dropped it. I knew I was gonna do that. Uh, this is a little gargoyle gecko. And uh, I'm definitely not the, the pro gecko handler here. Jessica usually keeps me away from them. These are a little morning gecko babies that we hatch. Look how big they're getting. They're doing so well and it's about time to move them into a bigger terrarium. Uh, we can move this way over here. We'll go all the way to the other aisle and I'll show you guys a few of our New Caledonian geckos and, and uh, we are starting to breed. I think I had mentioned and on these sides we're just seeing like leopard geckos. We've got lots of leopard geckos. I'll definitely uh, show you guys some leopard geckos in the future because they're, they're so cool. We love leopard geckos obviously. Uh, these are just some of our New Caledonia geckos here and you know we're going to be, I've been saying we we're going to build the room in the basement that would be a bunch of New Caledonian gecko room and stuff like that. Obviously right now everything's on hold just because you know we don't know what the future is going to hold for everything but we are excited to get back to that pretty soon. This is one of our lychee geckos from last year and it's looking beautiful and of course we put our uh, a couple of our lychees together just a couple days ago. They're still doing well. They didn't fight. They're doing good so hopefully with any luck we'll actually produce lychees for the very first time but like I said I can't wait to have a room with beautiful enclosures for them and just I mean it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool you know I mean I can't wait for it and uh, here's some of our other geckos here. I think that this is let me see this is a gargoyle gecko here. Oh and look how beautiful that is. <sighs> That thing is ridiculous. I mean, wow. And you guys know that we just got Deadpool line for the very first time. Uh, eggs, good eggs, and I was so excited about that. But we have a lot of other really beautiful reds and patternless and all kinds of good stuff. We've been kind of, you know, we've been kind of honing our gecko, in particular our gargoyle gecko colony for the last maybe three to four years pretty heavily, you know. So uh, it's, it's pretty nice. And then, of course, these guys are just some of little crested geckos. So uh, we got a little crest that's in here. Oh, there's one's in there. I'm not sure if that's the only one in here or not. I think it is, unfortunately. But uh, you can kind of see in that little pot right there. <laughs> I'll go this way too, so you guys can see. So it's, oh, here he comes. There you go. Hello. Hi, buddy. What's going on? So obviously we've been breeding crested geckos too. You know, just playing around with them. We love them and they're super cool. I don't see ourselves having this huge colony of crested geckos anytime soon. Definitely working more on the gargoyles and lychees. Uh, also chihuahua stuff. We started breeding chihuahuas as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, we have some uh, leopard gecko stuff over here. Just a, a bunch of different leopard geckos that, you know, we're just starting to breed. This is just a, a really pretty patty stripe. But we have a lot of really cool leopard geckos that are up to size to breed this year. So hopefully, God willing, uh, we'll have a good year with that, good year with colubrids. And, uh, and more or less, guys, that is the tour of the upstairs of BHB. Again, you can see a little bit more baby geckos down these aisles here. These ones go get moved up in shoebox, then ultimately into sweater boxes and so on like that. Um, and that's it. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of uncut, natural, uh, take it as it is type of a video. If you do, I'll do another one maybe next week downstairs at BHB or over at the Reptarium and we could do like maybe three in this series. Only if you guys like it. Uh, I know it's not as fancy and we don't have all the cool B-roll but I wanted to give you guys some real time. Also give you guys a longer video that you can kind of distract yourself because I, uh, I know we're going to get through this together guys so stay positive, stay healthy. Uh, if you want some more distraction you can go right up here and you can subscribe to the podcast channel called Checking In. I'll be doing a podcast at least once or twice a week so please check that out. You can roll through a playlist right over here of stuff subscribe to the vlog channel this side turn the post notifications on i hope you enjoyed this have a wonderful day be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you guys tomorrow